and Henry Jekyll, through whom mine upbringing and excellent education were combined with disastrous results. Though he seemed at the outset to be destined for happiness, to travel through life on the cushion compartments of wealth and privilege, to enjoy the esteem of his fellow men and the fond admiration of women, this was sadly not the fate allotted to him. Instead, he was to be doomed and miserable and hated by all of mankind. How this came to pass and whose fault it was, it is now our pleasure to relate.
groweth thick skin. See, day after day we see twisted, contorted bodies clamber up to our office, racked in pain, streaming geysers of blood. <coughs> we can't let every bit of suffering affect us all. We'd be too miserable to help anyone at all. You're perfectly right, my dear. Thank heaven for your medical dispassion. We ladies so often require a, a doctor's hand to pull us from these horrid, horrid feelings. Now then, let's put this dreadful dog incident behind us and try to salvage the evening. Uh, we're having a nice ham, Dr. Jekyll, and creamed cabbage. Wonderful! I'm famished! Oh, and Ivy, put an extra chair at the table. Cousin Xavier's joining us for dinner. Yes, sir. Henry, hey, have you forgotten this dear little cousin? I arranged this especially with her mother at the Holly Duke and Smith charity luncheon. <laughs> Miss Duke is all. Miss Duke is all. Must have forgotten. Well, the more the merrier. And Lady Stark of Warwickshire with those horrid daughters of hers. They're not coming, are they? And Lady Throckmortonshire is my dearest friend, and I refuse to hear any slanders against her or her family. But she's insufferable. Those hats, like something crawled out of a sewer and gave birth on her head. <laughs> <laughs> Except, of course, for the list. Penelope was born with the list. I'm ashamed of you two, sniggling behind their backs like school children. The poor girl can't help if her tongue won't work properly. And though Lady Rockmorton surely has a lamentable taste in town, she's nonetheless the richest woman in the nation and therefore worthy of respect. Yes, yes, of course. We promise to behave. I see to it, you do. Ambrosia, come along and help me with my hair. The strain of the afternoon has brought it the list inelegantly down. Yes, mother. <laughs> <laughs> now, Henry, you must pay attention to Miss Duke little tonight. You mustn't spend the whole evening talking medicine with Cousin Xavier. I can't talk to Miss Duke this old. She unnerves me. You like her, don't you? Well, yes, I like her. And you want to marry her? I don't know about that. Perhaps <laughs> someday. But for now, I'd rather be wed to science! <laughs> Imagine, 
being free to roam the streets, yelling at passers-by, kicking and biting and grabbing at everyone with no <laughs> mowing down whoever gets in your way, no longer conforming to the rules of polite society. Good grief! Sounds like being an American. <laughs> <laughs> and then returning to the comfort of society without any guilt. Why, it's a dream come true, and I, Henry Jekyll have discovered how to make that dream a reality. Come in. The dinner guest has arrived. Oh, thank you. And tell them we'll join them shortly. Yes, sir. Oh, and I think there will be a gentleman in the laboratory from time to time, a Mr. Hyde. I've given him a key, and he will be assisting me with some experiments. Do not be alarmed if you see him here. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. <laughs> I mean, I won't be alarmed, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be anything else? No! Run along. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dead on my feet. <laughs> I look out in life and see it's all in the color of dirt. 
these are the powers that be at present. You're one devout child of Mrs. Jekyll. <laughs> Pray tell me, dear, why must the blessing forever be twined with a curse? <laughs> I don't believe I've had the pleasure. How do you do? That's a fascinating hat you have on. Why, thank you. I had it made especially. It is intended to suggest a flaming rose bush doused by a pitcher of cream. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the eggnog, Miss. Bring it here, I Yes, <laughs> 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 Kill her. Oh, good God. 
I'm merely going to jab her with the steak knife, and you're going to help me. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, don't protest. We must go to the laboratory and retrieve the vials. I 
I'm sorry, I had the bell rang, but I was all the way down the- Oh, no! No, no, it's not the one! Point 
is, I need a pint of blood from your sister's finger, and I was wondering if you'd help me acquire it. No, I won't do such a thing because poor humanity. That would be a tragedy. It won't hurt her if it's done correctly. Here, I'll give you a shilling to prick her with the hatpin. No, I won't do it. Listen here, you little pest. <laughs> I'm a doctor, and I need that blood for some experiments. Oh, Henry, what's going on under here? Oh, we were just talking about butterflies. No, we were not. We were talking about blood. Oh, this is very strange. People are going to start wondering if something is the matter. Is something the matter? Why is that kind of on the table? Oh, um, Henry was just helping Penelope find her hatpin. <laughs> Penelope, I'm Clyde.
Well, let that be a lesson to her. One should not go around tampering with nice old books of fun and just give away. <laughs> Bye. 
words. See what we're looking for is a criminal. What are you say? What did he do? Well, well, he's been terrorizing the neighborhood. Since the wee hours in the morning, he pushed the baby carriage down the fountain, got the baby down, chased the cat up a tree, and he even trampled an old woman's Christmas wreath. No! <laughs> oh, no. You don't have to tell me. I can buy it. Oh, you now. See, I thought so about her accent. But you know, I'm just a Marjorie Larry Larry now. Let's see. Drop the ball! What are you doing standing around gabbing with nursemaids? We've got a criminal to apprehend. I, I, I was interviewing the passerby, sir, to, to see if she's seen anything. <laughs> <laughs> what, Hachi? Only a bird with one foot. Ah! A bird with one foot, eh? Constable, I want you to blow that whistle. <laughs> it's not running around.
Das Mädel. Sure, but 
We sing worship today when they get married. We're we'll moving to a house with a fountain. A fountain? Oh, won't that be grand? Except Dr. Jekyll didn't come home last night. Maybe he was chopped in a bag. Oh, he was chopped in a pot pie. Making is getting rather annoying. I'm not <coughs> helping nature take its course. Well, help nature take its course somewhere else. You can nuke the stray cats in a park or plant a tree in a garden. What would you like me to do with all of these extra pigeon feathers? Oh, I don't know. Just hide them somewhere. Not Henry. It took a great deal of time to do it. After your ill behavior last night, I don't see what was so terrible about it. You ran screaming around the dinner table and attacked a ten-year-old. Rubbish! I didn't run. I walked quickly. <laughs> Whether you ran or not is hardly the point. Well, my point is that you always exaggerate. I do not. Yes, you do. And you pronounce words wrong. Schadenfreude, it, for example. I do not. I say schadenfreude just like everyone else. There, you did it again. You forgot the last syllable. That's how you're supposed to No, be. it's not. And I bet you don't even know what schadenfreude is. Oh, yes, I do. A shot of pride is a German crumb cake. <laughs> <laughs> That's Lebke. Shot of pride is joy at another's pain. Oh. Uh, Ivy uh, seems to have fainted. <laughs> Come in. Forgive the intrusion. I was in the neighborhood and. Oh, God, I won't have you blind. I didn't do anything. She just got fainted. Oh, 
control. We can't let her know the maid's fainted from hunger. He'll look tomorrow. Well, what do you suppose we do? Hide the maid behind the curtain? <laughs> we'll be right there, Miss Dufusel. Xavier, go and saw her. Please 
hit him up. What happened? I'm not sure. He seems to have collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes, Miss Dukas, I did overhear you. And what's more, I was glad to. You were? <laughs> There's something I've been meaning to tell you. Uh, uh, there is? Yes. Oh, Dr. Jekyll! Oh! Thinking of Dr. Jekyll, but we saw the murder in the park and it 
works and I can't control my evil side. I'm helpless to pin on these horrid transformations. Well, perhaps there's a lesson here to be learned about tampering with nature. Oh, maybe not! Oh, maybe not! I need you to give me another drop of blood. Oh, no, I am not going to eat her again. No, from her, from the other twin. The good one. All right, I'll think it over. No. <laughs> All right, fine. Lady Throckmorton's shirt and the child will be coming this afternoon. You must wait for them here in the drawing room. Oh, that may be a bit difficult. You see, Ambrosia believes I'm in love with Miss Dufusel. I can see why, since I was begging her not to marry you, but you must understand, old chum. I am 100% behind you. But you aren't treating Miss Dufusel terribly well. And perhaps the poor girl does deserve to know that you're an axe-wielding murderer. You've changed, haven't you? <laughs> well, maybe we could discuss this later.
lies, she might have developed a lifelong aversion to feather beds. <laughs> well, I do think it's wrong to murder pigeons. Don't you, Mrs. Duckle? Why, of course it's wrong. Do you think the murdered pigeon had any baby pigeons at home? Oh, well, I'm not sure. sure. I suppose most pigeons do breed quite uncontrollably. <laughs> <laughs>
What's the matter? I heard shouts. Hey, 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 in the trims, have you? You give us a citation for that. Oh, 
I'm 